Well, here to explain how he sleeps very well now as he's part of this new movie, Pump, is former Shell Oil U.S. President John Hoffmeister, along with Pump, the movie associate producer, Ann Norman. Great to see you both and welcome. Thank you. This, this documentary has been a long time coming, I think, because people really need to focus on, on what's, what's the next thing to get us off and wean us off, not just overseas oil, but oil overall. But Anne, what is your trailer line to grab viewers for Pump the Documentary? So in the trailer, we want people to first feel the pinch. You said gas prices are high, and they're horribly high. So we want people to understand the pinch, which they fully understand. But it's also hopeful. There's something that we can do. There's a solution. And it's not an oil-based solution. It's alternative fuels. It's different kinds of fuels. Well, let me clarify. Gasoline prices right now are actually pretty low when you look at the past couple of years. But we know that all it takes is one bad right. headline, like ISIS takes over Iraqi oil fields. Right. And they're trying to, trust us. So we don't want to get to that point. So, John, what is the answer? And it, it doesn't necessarily mean extricating ourselves from the actual big oil companies. It's including them as well as other opportunities, correct? This is taking the entire American capability to produce fuel whether it's oil, whether it's natural gas, whether it's biofuel, whether it's electricity for electric cars, putting it all together and giving Americans choice for what they put in their vehicle. It's choice that brings competition to the gas pump. It's choice that uses natural gas as a transportation fuel, as ethanol, as methanol. It includes the oil companies because they produce the oil, the chemicals, and the natural gas. Hold on one second. We're gonna and as you look at all the alternatives, John makes an excellent point, but I, I look at this and I say, you, you can't force gas stations to offer 50 different options. Don't, at some point, don't we all need to, to see one or two winners in all of this? We saw the government try and set out the edict about ethanol, and, and that had a, had a weird effect on, on corn prices and things like that. How do we figure out who are the winners, and do we just let the free market work here? We're actually, you said it, we're believers in the free market. Let the market choose. People will choose if they have choice, as John said. Give, give, get some competition in there. We, are, we like natural gas-based fuels, alcohol fuels, ethanol can be made from natural gas, as can methanol. Methanol is used in race cars. Why, why isn't natural gas and cars that are run on natural gas getting adopted more? I look at that and I say, we've got so much of this, John, and yet it, it's not happening. Are, are the, the auto industry, car, are, are they not pumping out enough of these cars, to use the term pump? Well, actually they are, but the software needs to be adjusted mm -hmm. in the cars that are not marked flex fuel vehicles. They already have the software capability to become flex fuel, but it's illegal to change your car over. So we have to get some regulatory changes to make all this happen. Oh, that's ridiculous. There's really just two. One is to enable people to change their cars from just gasoline fuel to multiple fuels, make it flex fuel, and that's just a software adjustment. And secondly, we need to get methanol declared a legal fuel by the Environmental Protection Agency. If those two steps were taken, and there's no taxpayer money really involved, it's, it's all private money that can invest in this new infrastructure, but ultimately consumers will go with price. After all the studies that the oil companies have done for 100 years, people choose gasoline based on price. Right, they and, do. And natural gas is so much less expensive than oil. How about electricity? Because part of your documentary includes Elon Musk, who was here mm -hmm. yesterday in a Fox Business exclusive, he of Tesla. Just this morning, Maria Bartiromo had Carlos Ghosn of Nissan. They've got the leaf out. Carlos Ghosn is a visionary. He was the first out there that trying to mass produce these things. Don't we need adoption? more quickly so that we can then figure out how to avoid the Middle Eastern terrorists who are trying to take over the oil fields and we can say, that's okay, do what you want. We don't need you anymore. We do, and we love electric cars. We love all of them. We're big fans of Tesla. We're big fans of Elon Musk, obviously, and he is a champion in this arena. We also think that there's, there's not enough battery capacity right now, so the manufacturing of batteries has to be ramped up before we can have that mass adoption. We think that alternative fuels like ethanol, like methanol, natural gas, provide a stopgap in the technology development of mass battery capacity. Where can we see this film if anybody wants to see it? In Times Square at the 42nd Street Cinema. And what if I'm not in New York? <laughs> and in Los Angeles. Okay. And next, dirt, across the nation, if you go to Pump the Movie, you'll see pumpthemovie.com. You'll see locations where we're opening and when. And there's some staggered dates around the nation. 
So just go to the website, pumpthemovie.com, and you will find times and locations. And Norman, film. it's great to have you. John Hoffmeister, thank you so much. And, and I think it's great that you're part of this, which is finding solutions and not being vicious about big oil. Either way, there are many opportunities. Let's hope America shows leadership here. Thank you so much. Thanks, Liz. The film is called, the, uh, called Pump. David? I'll be watching it.